overflows. No attitude about sex is needed. Very often it is asked, how do I decide the topic to speak on? It is mysterious and mystical also. Very often I myself do not know the subject. One thing I know that the moment I come on camera, there is an invisible audience in front of me. Some of these belong to the past. These are in their formless presence. Also, there are many who are yet to assume physical form. Still, there is a category of those who are contemporary. Most of these are not yet ready for various reasons. As a result, each talk is designed to take care of all these three categories. Entire existence is composed of sound vibrations. All questions, messages, both silent and in words, are part of the cosmos. Each awakened one is connected to this cosmic existence. He finds many questions floating in the cosmos. Thus a question is chosen and the talk begins. These questions must be interesting to listeners and explanation easily comprehensible and based on scriptural and scientific understanding. One interesting question is relating to sex and its transformation. What is the nature of orgasm? What are its types? Does orgasm differ in men and women? Can one get orgasm without sex? And such similar questions which I will speak as time goes on. If you take sex naturally, with no philosophy around it, with no philosophy for or against, if you take sex as you take your hand, your eyes, etc., if it is not totally accepted as a natural thing, then Tantra will appeal to you. And only then can Tantra be useful for many. But the days of Tantra have arrived. That is why my focus is on various aspects of Tantra. The word Tantra comes from two Sanskrit words, Tan meaning body and Tra meaning beyond body. Tantra is therefore the journey of transcendence beyond body. Tantra is not philosophy, instead its approach is totally scientific and methodological. <coughs> Present time is ripe to take sex naturally. It is possible that the explosion may come and has come from the West because psychologists like Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, William Reich and Elder have prepared the background. In that background, ancient wisdom can find a suitable soil for its growth. The psychologists knew nothing about Tantra but they had made the basic ground for Tantra to evolve. Western psychology has come to a conclusion that basic human disease is somewhere around sex. The basic insanity of man is sex oriented. This is the background and in this background Tantra will blossom 
to spread its light of awakening. <clears throat> this is destined. So, un unless this sex orientation is dissolved, man cannot be natural and normal. Man has gone wrong only because of his attitude about sex. No attitude indeed is needed. Only then are you, only then you are natural. What attitude do you have about your eyes, hand and other parts of the body? Are they evil or they divine? Are you for your, are you for your eyes or against them. There is no such attitude. That is why you treat your eyes as normal. Tantra says that whatever you are, the you are the ultimate. The existence is not opposite to you. It is a growth. You can grow to be the ultimate there is no opposition between you and the reality. You are part of it. So, no struggle, no conflict, and no opposition to nature is needed. You have to use all that is available in nature, all that is available to you in existence. Human body is the vehicle. Just as vehicle can take you from one destination to another, so too the body that vehicle is and consciousness surrounding it can help you to transcend from one state of consciousness to another. Such is the scientific way of Tantra. In yoga you have to fight with yourself to go in order to go beyond. In yoga the world, the moksha, liberation, you as you are and you as you can be. These are two opposite things. What you are and what you are destined to be. So suppress, fight, dissolve that which you are so that you can attain that which you can be. Going beyond is a death of yoga. You must die for your real being to be reborn. In the eyes of Tantra, Yoga is deep suicide. You must kill your na natural self, your body, your instincts, your desires, everything. Tantra says accept yourself as you are in a deep acceptance, in a deep understanding. You do not create a gap between you and the real between the world and nirvana. Do not create any gap. There is no gap for Tantra. No death is needed for your rebirth. No death is needed. Rather, transcendence is rebirth. Transcendence from one state to another is rebirth. In that you are not in any conflict with your present state and what you attain. For transcendence, use yourself as a vehicle. For example, sex is there, the basic energy. The basic energy you are born through and born with. Children are born through you, through this energy. 
and born with it as the existential bioenergy. The basic cells of your being and of your body are all sexual. As a result, the human mind revolves around sex. For yoga, you must fight with this energy through fight. You create a different center in yourself. The existing center has to be replaced with the new center that you create for yourself through yoga. The more you fight, the more you become integrated in a different center, then sex is not your center. Fighting with sex, of course, consciously will create in you a new center of being, a new emphasis, a new crystallization, then sex will not be your energy. You will create your own energy fighting with sex. A different energy will come into being and a different center of existence will evolve. For Tantra, you have to use this energy of sex. Do not fight with it. Instead, transform it. Tantra is the way to transform it and go beyond the consciousness and the energies of the body. Do not think in terms of animity. Be friendly to it. And transformation is destined to happen. Enough for now.